welcome good night Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share as you join, as you enter this prayer room. I encourage you to share. Allow the Lord to use you. Tuesday night, wherever you are connecting from. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good night to all. Good evening. Good morning. Welcome. Whatever you are searching for, I pray you find it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <coughs> Excuse me. Whatever it is <coughs> that you're searching for, I pray you find it tonight. I pray you find it in nowhere else but in Jesus Christ. Whatever your situation is. you find solution to your problems somebody go ahead and begin to share this message welcome all wherever you're connecting from I see St. Catherine Jamaica Spanish town I see Grenada South Carolina Clarendon Georgia Brooklyn, <laughs> Kingston, New York. Guyana, St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. Welcome, welcome. Bronx, New York. Queens, New York. Alabama, Canada, we welcome you. 
Portland, Jamaica, Boynton Beach, Florida, <coughs> St. Augustine, Florida. Hey, St. Augustine, how are you? Welcome, Canada, one more time. The Canadians are coming out. <laughs> Hallelujah. New Jersey, Maryland. Welcome. Glory to God. Kingston, Jamaica. Welcome. We welcome you. I encourage you to go ahead and share this message. I have a short message tonight because our fasting begins at midnight. Our fasting begins at midnight. No rice, no flour, no bread, no crackers. When it's time to take your communion my prayer is that you find a little piece of something that you can chew on but as for when you're having your meals none of those products no you need something from the lord you have to give up something for the whole seven days of fasting let us pray we're going on fasting for seven days and we're asking god to do it for us we can't, the flesh cannot do anything. It doesn't matter how you look. Your looks cannot face God. <coughs> there was a time when we think looks could make it. Looks don't cut the mustard anymore. It's about what's in the heart. It's about living our life to please God. If it was about our looks, many of us would have been in hell a long time ago. We would have left Hallelujah. So let us give God honor and praise because he's good. The Bible declared that his mercies endure it forever. According to the book of Psalm 100, it said, For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure it. His truth endure it. Hallelujah. It's truth. Endure it. Once again, welcome. Let us pray. It's kind of cold, meaning dry air, a lot of Arctic air. Hallelujah. People of God, we are not going to heaven in this body. And this is why many people are still living in sin. They claim that they can repent. But tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. We might go to bed tonight and don't wake up. So I encourage you to repent. I encourage you to repent. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We cannot mock God. We cannot fool God. We cannot trick God. He is the creator of the heaven and the earth. He is our Father according to the Word of God. And when you are a parent, you know your children. So God is in control of our life. He knows us. He knows what we need, but He wants us to ask. He don't want us to go ahead and try to take anything. He wants us to come to Him in prayer. He wants us to send it out. Let the Word proceed up out of our mouth so he know that we are serious 
I don't know who God sent me here to talk to, but I came to let someone know it's time to pray. Let us put this fasting before God. Seven days of fasting. With your favorite bread you cannot have. Your favorite rice and beans. Yellow rice, black rice, brown rice, white rice. You can't have none of those. Amen. That good old dumpling, you can't have it. <coughs> you cannot cheat on the Lord. We're going to abstain from all those starch. And ask God to give us strength. Strengthen our spiritual man. Slay the flesh. Let the flesh get weak. Somebody said the heart is willing but the flesh is weak. The heart is willing but the pocket is weak. Let us go to God with a grateful heart and put the flesh under subjection. Let us speak to the flesh to quiet, to be quiet. Let us tell flesh to be quiet. Let us silence flesh for the next seven days. It doesn't matter which part of the flesh rise up. We're going to put it under subjection to the Holy Spirit and tell flesh to be quiet. You can, yes, you can dictate to your flesh. You can behave yourself. You can encourage yourself in the Lord. My God. A lot of things are going to come up against you in this fasting. A lot of accusations will come in this fasting. People will physically try to challenge you in this fasting. Get ready for war because this fasting is a fasting without our favorite food, starch. The starch from the flour and the rice. Those cookies, those cakes, we're not going to have them. Yes. I encourage you to find a way to enjoy breakfast without that bread and that fried dough and that croissant and that pancake. Those things, they got flour in it. The fritters, the dumpling. The puddings, let us pray and ask God to give us strength to endure what's ahead of us. Somebody said, just eating a piece of cake. You can eat all you want until midnight. But I encourage you, we're going to be fasting and we're going to stay on it. And the devil is not going to distract us and we're going to get results. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you to say thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to discipline ourselves enough to be on fasting. Lord, we say thank you. Where we can come and fellowship. Lord, we say thank you once again. Where we can come, Lord God, and tear down hell where we can send our prayers up to heaven to disgrace our enemies, where we can stop the evil hand from coming up against our children, our marriage, our ministry, our home. Lord, we say thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the honor to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to fast Without you, it could never happen. So we give you honor and praise in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even now, O oh God, as I sit here before your people and before you, have your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now as I cover myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
I cover every soul that will view this broadcast. For those who are near and far. For those who are in agreement. And for those who are not in agreement. I pray your strength. May the Lord reward you for your actions. In the name of Jesus Christ I say thank you. Amen. May the Lord reward you for your actions. Hallelujah. Jesus. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. <clears throat> I'm excited for the fasting. I'm not anxious. I'm excited. Fasting is my time. It's in my element. It's all up my alley. Yes. That's where I get my strength from fasting. And when I get the opportunity to fast with you on social media, it's always a blessing. Amen. It's always a blessing to fast with you. Many times I'm fasting and I'm not fasting with social media. So it's a blessing to be able to fast with you. To be able to minister to you. To be able to speak to you. I give God thanks for entrusting me with this opportunity. I will never take it for granted. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I just want to encourage someone to be ready, to be prepared. Sister Saskia, I'm praying that you get a chance to do the fasting. I know you live a hectic life. I know you're a what, busy woman, but it's my prayer that you find some time to join us in this fasting. If you see someone that's not here with us tonight, I encourage you to go ahead and share the broadcast with them. I'm not going to be here for long. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm not going to be here for long. So I encourage you, yes, to share the broadcast with your friends and your relatives even if you're just being nosy <laughs> even if you're just passing through to look what's going on tonight to see who's on here to see who is here <laughs> i encourage you to share it hallelujah yes we're asking god to give us strength we're not gonna take in any carbs no unless it's coming from something different i found i found something in the grocery store i i i've been eating it for a while and i stopped so the other day i went to grab a small pack this thing is made from corn it's like a cake and it's very good it has no flour in it. It's just corn and water. The first time I saw this thing, they made it for me in Dominica Republic. It's very good. Just water and corn and something else. I think salt. It's like a pancake, but it's made with cornmeal. So it's called yellow corn griddle cake. There is no flour in it. It's vegan. And gluten free there it is it's vegan you see sometimes we can share we can share our recipes throughout the fasting because there are some people who are not familiar with what we're doing they don't know what to eat and because of that they won't be able to do the fasting so I'm um, giving you this opportunity not to copy anything from the internet and post it on here i will delete it if you find a quick recipe to substitute the rice the stuff the breakfast food because that's the most important meal of the day you can have salad with a piece of fish or some chicken or something but i encourage you people of god don't eat too heavy we are setting that aside you can wait next when today is the 14th of the month the 11 days from now will be christmas so 
we're going to take seven days out of it. The reason why we didn't do the fast in the end of November is because of Thanksgiving. And it's the same for Christmas, you know. But in January, come next month, we're going to do the fast in the last week of the month. That is where we really use, use the last week of the month to do the fasting. We're only doing it in the middle of the month because of the holidays. And some people, they don't have enough discipline. They cannot avoid all that goodies on the table during the holidays. So we are doing the fasting in the middle of the month. So I encourage you to participate. There are no excuses for this one. Now, we have to discipline the body. If you have to go to the doctor and he said, don't eat. You have to be on fasting. You cannot touch that sweet piece of spice bun or that corn bread or whatever you have in the kitchen. I encourage you that good juicy patties, whatever it is, the, 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 the what you call it, the crust is made of flour. So we have to discipline ourselves. You want something from the Lord? and you're on fasting, it means that you're going to have to do something. Give up something for the, for, yes, for fasting. Because fasting is discipline. Many of you will have breakthroughs. This is, the, this, these are the things that I enjoy. Many of you will have breakthrough. A lot of testimonies will be coming in. People will see the doors begin to open for their business hallelujah yes doors will be open for business business opportunities so i encourage you people of god to participate don't just sit there and say i wanted to but i don't know i can't do without the rice somebody said me don't know well, you can continue to bake your cakes, but you just have to discipline yourself. Somebody said, Pastor, I, I am going to bake cake for a competition. And I was wondering if I can taste it. I said, yes, you can taste it. You don't need a whole slice to taste. One of my jobs when I was younger, I used to run a pastry shop in Willow Dean. St. Catherine, Jamaica, and all the good stuff I used to get a chance to eat, it contribute to my weight gain. I came to tell someone here tonight, the Lord is about to bless you in this fasting. Be ready. Don't come here looking for who is not here. Come here expecting to meet Jesus for the next seven days. So you can receive your breakthrough. Don't come here looking for who is here. If you're going to be on this fasting, it's time to shut down and mind that business that pays you. Pay attention to what concerns you. God is about to bless you. When God called Abraham, he didn't tell Abraham to bring any relative or family member. Abraham brought his nephew, and that nephew gave him hell. Many of us, we cannot resist the urge to pull other people behind us. Hallelujah. But once we are going on fasting, it's personal. It's you and God. It is you and God. So I encourage you. I encourage you. Good evening, Cayman Islands. I am, um, what is it? Uh, Cayman Brack. Good evening, Cayman Brack. Welcome. If you are on the fasting, I encourage you to minimize your phone conversations. Unless you are working into telemarketing or customer service, I encourage you to cut down on the conversations. Many of us, we find enough time to talk. And we don't get to hear from God because we are just talking, talking, talking. When you're fasting, you have to be quiet and listen because God will appear to you and minister to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't miss your blessing because you love 
you, you couldn't resist the urge to stay off the phone. Don't miss your blessing. I encourage you to be quiet. My God, minimize the secular TV shows. When I say secular TV shows, I mean worldly stuff. If it's not like something from the gospel station or a Christian movie, don't focus too much on it because whatever you place your eyes on, it can be a distraction. It can take you places that you're not supposed to go. I came to encourage someone. Be careful of what you focus on during the fasting. Focus on the word. Focus on God. Hallelujah. Focus. You know what you're going through. You know you have your prayer requests. So I encourage you to pay attention to what God is doing in this time in your life. Last night I wanted to come on the live and when I click, when I, when I click on, um, when, 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 when I, when I clicked, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. There was no internet service. So I just had to leave that alone. There was no internet service. Nothing. I could not get my phone to work. Amen. And for those of you who didn't get to see Sunday service because I was in church preaching. You can go to my page. It's on Instagram. Go to my Facebook page and you will see the link on my Facebook page for Sunday service. Yes, I did came with the word. There were some technical issues in church. So Facebook was not able to come on. But I know the devil is a liar. Amen. I know the devil is a liar. So I encourage someone to go ahead and share the message so we can proceed. Glory to God. People of God, be on the fasting. It's your breakthrough, not mine alone. Don't allow pastor to get everything. And all you have to do to be a part of it is join in. That's it. So, number one, I won't be available for phone conversation during the next seven days unless the Lord tell me to call you. Unless the Lord gave me instructions to call you, I'm not going to be available for the phone. I'm sorry. You can send me a text message if you need to get to me. But if you call me, I won't be available. I need my blessing. It's the end of the year. We cannot be distracted. We cannot be distracted. It's the end of the year. And we are going on fasting. And we are going all the way in. No. We're going to go on fasting New Year's Eve. December 31st. It's going to be Friday. We're going to be fasting all day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. New Year's Eve. We're going to be on fasting. We're going to ring in the new year strong. We're going to finish strong. So I encourage you, let us do this. We cannot afford to allow the devil to rob us anymore. I, I am tired of hearing those stories where the devil keep on getting away like a bandit. We cannot afford to allow Satan to get away like a bandit. We must intercept the devil in his tracks. It's time for us to stop those who are trying to stop us with our prayers. You can't fold your hands and say, God will take care of it. No. He said, pray and don't stop. He said, repent. Repent when you mess up. Repent. Ask God to empty you, wash you, cleanse you, and fix you back in alignment. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
So I encourage your people of God. It's not going to be seven days of Lada Daddy or Ladi Daddy. It's seven days of work. For eight hours today, I was watching a young man preaching. Eight hours. I was forced to watch him because I was somewhere where the TV was on the program. Fine. And one of the things that he was focusing on, he said, the reason why many, many, many of us, mankind, don't get to where we have to be because we're not putting in any work. The reason why many of us don't get to the spot where we ought to be, where God wants us, where God is showing us, and we cannot get over there because our hands are tight. And I agree with him. He's a young minister of the gospel, and I am in agreement with him. Why? There are some of us, we need everything that comes with living righteous. But we refuse to do the will that God placed, the burden that God placed upon us. Many of us are carrying some burden that God placed upon us. And we refuse to execute. So I came to let you know, people of God, during fasting, it's time to give birth. It's time to labor. Even if you have to lock up in your bathroom, your prayer closet, your bedroom, in your car, wherever you get a chance to hide and pray, do it. It's time to give birth. We are at the end of the year. We have been here since the first day of January. No, we are coming close to the end of December. We need to pray. And stop talking about don't you don't have to. According to the word of God, Jesus said it. Don't say God knows your heart. He created you. So he already know who he created you to be. Even when you are disobedient, God knows that you are disobedient. If you're living righteous, God knows that you're living righteous. He knows who you are. He's just watching you. He knows who you are. He is watching you. My God. Hallelujah. As I look up, as I look up on Instagram, I receive a prayer request. For a young man that I have to pray for. May the Lord do it for you. I see you're here with us tonight. May the Lord turn your situation around. And you know what's funny? All week, this week, I've been receiving prayer requests. For people with serious medical issue. I received one today. The lady found out last week. Her back was hurting her and she went to the doctor and they ran some tests. They said she have ovarian cancer. And it spreads all over. The question was, wasn't there any form of symptoms before? No. You see how the devil is wicked. How could the cancer spread all over and you never felt anything? So many people are in ICU. I received the messages to pray. So we come in, in agreement, people of God, to pray for those who are attached to this platform with sick relatives and friends. We are coming in agreement. Some of them are not even saved. So we are asking God to give them a second chance that they can repent and surrender their life to the Lord. At least give them a second chance at life. 
so they can repent and turn their life over to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we thank God for what he's getting ready to do. We would have never received these prayer requests if God is not doing something behind the scenes. So we pray for every sick individual that is connected to this ministry, that is connected to you here. Hallelujah. Many people have children that are sick. The children are hiding the sicknesses. I received another message earlier that a young woman has been hiding the cervix cancer from her mother who is connected to this ministry. She said, Rev, you always said we pray. We need to pray for our children because some of them are sick. So we come against that spirit of ovarian cancer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God. We come against it. Any, 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 any sickness that runs in your territory or runs in your tongue, we dominate and control it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. My God. Any sickness that rule your family, we call it out to dry up and die by the fire of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any sickness that runs in your bloodline. And when I say bloodline, I'm talking about the people in your family. That you are related to because you share the same blood. Hallelujah. Any sickness. My God. So Steve, I pray for you. I'm praying for God to strengthen your arms. I'm praying for God to breathe afresh upon you. I'm praying that you begin to believe in the healing powers of Almighty God. The blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that you begin to believe that there is power in the blood. So you can receive your healing. Oh God. Steve, I pray your strength. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. May the good Lord that we serve heal you to shame your enemies. Hallelujah. You see, according to the word of God, when the children of Israel struggled all these years to get out of Egypt, when they got to the promised land, the Bible said not one of them was feeble. So I'm praying that you get closer to God. You see, sometimes sickness comes, but it's not for unto death. Sometimes sickness comes to bring us closer to God. It's not unto death. It might look funny. The doctors might have some questions. Your situation might be questionable. But I'm here to let you know. Not every sickness is unto death. So my prayer. My prayer. Is that you do what you were called to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My prayer is that you begin to believe. That he who watches over Israel. Neither sleep nor slumber. Your God is not sleeping. He's not dead. My God. And the same God that brought Lazarus from the dead. Is waiting to heal you. All you got to do is believe. I decree and I declare this word upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. 
Oh, Jesus. I received another phone call. Was it last night? That there's a man in ICU. And we were praying that the Lord give him a second chance so he could be revived and get a chance to accept Jesus Christ. That was my prayer for the man. I don't know him because it's a prayer request. You see, the devil is going around at the end of every year looking for blood to see who he can take. But we are here to send him back to the pit of hell where he belongs. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've never heard so about so much sickness until this week. Mm -hmm. Two people in ICU. One young man who is struggling with his health. And another woman that was told to get her house in order. You know when you are told to get your house in order, to call all the family members to make the necessary arrangements and all of that. But we pray for a turnaround in your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, the reason why I ask you to pray, if it was you, if it, I'm, I'm saying it, if it was you, you would want someone to pray for you. If it was you that's in the situation or your family members or even your children, you would want someone to stand up in prayer for you. So don't back down when it's time to pray for someone else. Don't hide. Don't pull yourself in a corner. I want you to get excited to pray for someone else just like the prayer is yours. Just like when someone is getting ready to pray for you and your people, your children, your mother, your father, yes, the, your loved ones. Get excited just as if it was going to be for someone in your family. Yes. The Bible says Jesus developed compassion. It means that he didn't know the people that he was praying for. That he was breathing upon them. That he was touching and setting them free. He opened the eyes of the blind. He raised the dead up. He opened the ears of the deaf. He made the lame to walk. He didn't know these people. He was not related to any of them. His friend, his only friend died. And he did not even hesitate when he found out the spot. He said to the sister, where did you bury him? And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. He did not say it twice. He said it once because he was busy. You don't have to know someone to pray for them. So I encourage you, open them out and let us pray. I mentioned a woman that was told to put her house in order. I don't know these people. I don't know any of them. I don't have to know them to pray for them. They don't have to know me to receive your healing. All they got to do is believe that the healer is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My question is, what if it was you? So tonight we're going to come in agreement and pray for everyone that is connected to this platform who are sick in their family, who have friends that are sick, who have relatives that are sick, who have sick spouse. Some people, their spouse are sick. And I'm going to ask this question again. What if it was you? I only use this word so you can have compassion. Many of you, you're, you're preparing your seed just to start sowing tomorrow because you're coming in the fasting head on and you need your, you need your prayer request to be answered. 
So you already fix your seed. So when you enter the fasting, you come in full force because you know what you want from God. But God did it this way tonight. So we could pray for those who are sick. So tomorrow when we come, we pray for you. <laughs> tomorrow when we are here, we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow when we come, we're going to be praying for you. So let us build up the courage to pray for the sick. We're going to do it in three. One, two, three. Father, we say thank you that we are able to be here to come in agreement. You say we are two or more are gathered. You are in your name. You are in the midst. And Lord God, we place every sick soul before you tonight. It doesn't matter your medical condition. You are the God of all. You are creator. You created them. You know them, Lord God. And tonight we ask you to remove every sickness from among them. You said when we live our life to please you according to the book of Exodus. When we live our life to please you, Lord God, you will bless our bread and our water. You will even remove sickness from the midst of us. And Lord, tonight we ask you to remove sickness from your people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we ask you to give them second chance. Sickness and the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the same house. So we ask you, Lord God, to remove spirit of sickness from among your people, the known and the unknown. Many are here and they are sick. Many have relatives that are sick. Many have spouse that are sick. Many have children that are sick. Many are just sick, oh God, of being sick. And tonight we ask you, Lord, for divine healing. We ask you, Lord God. You said believe and they shall receive. We ask you, Lord God, to heal the sick in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we have to pray. I, I, I feel a heat coming from behind me. Jesus. Oh God. I feel heat. Somebody's receiving their healing. I release healing virtue tonight upon this platform. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Well, um, people of God, during this fasting, it's going to be for seven days. I encourage you to wear white or something with a little white in it or red and white or something with red. I'm encouraging you to wear something white or something that has white in it or red or something with red. It needs to have a little bit of white or a little bit of red. Amen. So I encourage you to be obedient. Many people have children that are sick and they don't know. Because the children hide it. Some young people are suffering in silence because they can't believe that they are sick. Mm -hmm. They are going to the doctor back to back and they are hiding it. So we, we uproot every sickness that is connected to this platform. We call it out to dry up and die by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. White or something with white. I'm wearing black and white. See? Or red or something with a little bit of red. But it has to have a little bit of white or a little bit of red or both. 
it's either rock red or white a little bit of white or anyway as long as it comes with a little bit of white or a little something with red or something with red and white something with white or something yeah so it's a little bit easier well if you cannot wear it on the outside wear it under your clothes because some people wear a lot of clothes especially now for those who are in the northeast or in canada or over there in europe and the uk i encourage you be obedient god wants you to be disciplined in this fast and he wants to do something and one of the things i've seen is that solid red or solid white or red and white or something that has a little bit of red in it or or solid white or something with a little bit of white in it or a combination amen one thing i understand that when god speak he, yes it come to pass i remember last month we were fasting what we didn't have was meat no meat at all no fish no seafood nothing just vegetables and, and whatever we could find and what the lord told me a lot of things were going to take place and as i sit here everything that god told me that was going to take place i've seen it with my eyes it manifested things begin to happen from all the four corners of the earth things begin to manifest and happen and contention begin and but i'm here to let you know this fasting this i'm gonna say low carbs because some people are gonna still eat carbs from different kind of foods but i came to let you know no rice no flour no bread nothing that they use flour to make no this is the fellowship cup it has a little wafer at the top and the communion wine at the bottom or grape juice whatever they call it whatever you can find if you're gonna have a little piece of cracker when it's time to take your communion to break bread find something but that is the only time you're going to have something that was put together with flour. Amen. So I encourage you people of God to be obedient. We are going on seven days of serious journey. And it's a journey for seven days. This fasting is a journey for seven days. And we are expecting results from God. Hallelujah. We are expecting results. We need results no rice no flour anything that include these ingredients no bread no crackers no patty no cake no cookie <laughs> there are so much stuff in the grocery store that's tempting read labels this is easier than the sugar because with the sugar they hide the sugar in so many ways amen so come january no sugar in that january fasting february no meat and we're gonna be obedient hallelujah thank you jesus read the labels people of god you will get result once you begin to make these type of efforts i'm not gonna call it sacrifice you're gonna be obedient making all these great efforts god will come true for you you have to put in the work to get results you need results so it's time for work make sure you are serious because god is serious about you amen the process is not going to be easy no one said it's going to be easy it's going to be seven days of hard work I don't know what I'm going to eat for the seven days, but I know God will sustain me. <laughs> yes. I'm praying that you join in on the fasting and be obedient. And whatever the Lord touch your heart to do, you do it and watch what he will do for you. The other day, the Lord told me that don't take any money for the ministry out of the charity. For the month of November. And I did it. I didn't take a cent. For the ministry. 
So I'm waiting for that blessing that comes for the month of November. There is a blessing that's coming to the ministry and it will manifest in January. Hallelujah. So you see sometimes when God wants to bless you, sometimes it don't happen right away. Some people get discouraged because they pray and they didn't hear from God right away. But remember Daniel? When Daniel fasted for 21 days, he didn't hear from God. God answered. But Daniel wasn't aware of it because the devil detained the destiny helper. So I pray that in this fasting, your destiny helper will never be detained. Oh Jesus, who am I talking to? Yes, like I said, we can share recipes right here, but don't bring a long list. Just one a day. One recipe daily. It's seven days of fasting. We're not running a... a, a <laughs> we're, not running, we're not running a cook shop or a, or a canteen. We're just sharing some ideas. Not even recipes. Share some ideas. We're not going to inbox anybody anything because I don't want any backlash. People are telling me about these inboxes and, and they're not comfortable with it. But I kept it quiet. So people of God, let us, let us be mature here. No inboxing anyone about any food. Let us be mature. We're sharing ideas because we're not eating any rice. We are not going to eat any flour. We are not going to mess with any sandwich. because Unless we're going to roll up that sandwich in some lettuce leaves. Or some avocado. But not bread. No croissant. No cookies. No crackers. No cakes. No puddings. Hallelujah. None of those things. So I know for many of us that's in the Caribbean. No patties. We're going to have a little bit of a problem. But you can have soup, salad, cereal, tea, and all those good stuff. Your destiny helper will never be cut off short. My God. Hallelujah. May your obedience bring forth your breakthrough in this time. Somebody go ahead and share because someone said to me the other day, let me know when you're going on fasting again. I want to join you. So I encourage you, people of God, Share the broadcast. We need to be disciplined. When you go to class, it doesn't matter who is the professor or who is the teacher or the principal. We have to listen to what they have to tell us because we pay our money to learn something new. So let us be disciplined and see what God has for us. My God. My brother Wilfred, I'm praying for God to do something big in your life. Mega. Huge. That's my prayer for you. For the Lord to do something great. That is the only way you can hear from God. Through obedience. You see some people hear from God. And they are disobedient. So they don't put it into action. Because he speaks to all of us. God speaks to people that are in prison. <laughs> he speaks to people that are in bondage. But we have to be obedient to carry out whatever God said.
Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Annette, I know you're going to be on the fasting. Sister Kida, Sister Denise, I know you're going to be on the fasting. Sister Claudia, Brother Wilfred, I know you're going to be fasting. I know you're going to chew Satan up <laughs> in this time. Oh, Jesus, the devil is in trouble. The devil is in trouble. I hear the Lord say the devil is in trouble. Hallelujah. Sister Chambers, I know you'll be on the fasting. You say you're ready. We are going on fasting at midnight. So after midnight, no food. So you'll be fasting from midnight till noon. So it's 12 hours. You can have water. You can have tea when you get up, but no food until we break. Sister Petronia Bailey, welcome. No rice, no bread, no flour, no beef patty, no bun, no cake, no cookies. None of that. No, 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 what you call it? French toast. None of those things. No French toast. Hallelujah. Yes, you rest, you get up, and from 6 a.m. to 12 noon, you'll be focused, reading the word of God, and if you eat, you're not on the fasting. You break at noon. Some people will go until later on in the day. You have to believe in your prayers. If you don't believe in your prayers, how will it work? It doesn't matter who pray for you. You have to believe when you pray. It doesn't matter who is praying for you. If you don't believe, it won't work. Oh, Sister Persia, you're going to join us. God bless you. It's, a, it's your obedience that will release you. It's your obedience to God that will release you. Hallelujah. And for those of you that are going to be on the fasting, I encourage you to be obedient. Minimize your phone conversation. Don't engage into conversation that will cause you to get angry and to stir up your spirit. To mess you up. No. You got to be obedient. You got to be obedient. Minimize your conversation. Get in the word. We are still in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Where Paul said with prayer and supplication. Let your request be known unto God. He said don't worry. Just pray. Whatever your situation is. Bring it before God. And it will come true for you. He will give you peace like a river. You need what you need from the Lord. And when it's time for you to receive from God, don't let anybody call you on the phone to distract you. You need your blessings. You see, these are the times when you know you need something from God. You don't sit next to your friend in church because when the Spirit come with the blessing, you sit next to your friend, you will be distracted. So when you are fasting, you're going to be in your own home doing your fasting. You are the boss of this fasting. It's between you and God, not you and your sister, not you and your cousin, you and God. You determine how bad you want this blessing. You determine how you're going to position yourself. You're going to be in alignment for your blessing. Hallelujah. My God, position yourself for your fasting so you can receive your breakthrough.
and I encourage your people of God, eat light. Don't overeat. You see, we tend to, when we're going on certain fasting, we're going to get weak. Let me tell you this, because you're going to do a fasting without that rice and that stuff. You're going to get weak. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. You're going to get weak, especially when you enter into the third day. And the fourth day, the devil will tell you to give up. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Ask God to favor you. <laughs> I am ready in position for this. Pastor Joyce Lerati God. Be ready. No conversation that will tear you down. That will break you. You know, sometimes you'll be, you'll be home trying to meditate on the word of God. And it's not your intention, but a simple phone call can come. And once you get off the phone, you don't want to even read the Bible anymore because you become distracted. So I encourage you, people of God, I beseech you by the mercies of God, write down your prayer requests and get into the word. No distraction. I promise you, if you avoid some of the conversations from the phone until next week, when, when the fasting ends, next week, tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is Wednesday. Hallelujah. And it's going to be for seven days. One, two, three, four, five. Eight. Okay, on the, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's on the 22nd. One, two, three, four, five, six. The 21st. The fasting ends next week, Tuesday, the 21st. It starts on the 15th and ends on the 21st. So on the 21st, you don't eat no rice, no bread. You eat your bread and your rice on the 22nd. The day the fasting ends is the last day of the fasting. So you don't eat that type of food. The next day, I, I, I just imagine I see some big, what you call those sandwich? The big sandwich is the, the long sub, 12 inch sub. Uh, yes, those big sandwiches. I just see them waiting at the end of the fasting. Those big sandwiches loaded with all kinds of stuff. People of God, let us take control. We got to watch what we eat. We got to watch what we eat. Food can destroy our health. We cannot afford to destroy our health with food. So this is good exercise, not to take in any of those things for seven days. It's good exercise. It's a form of cleansing. It's a form of cleansing. Especially the one that we will do in February. In January, no sugar. In February, no meat, no fish, no kind of meat. Those cleansing helps. It's like, yeah, it's like detox. Amen. Once again, I just want to let us pray, people of God, before we go. I just came to prep some people for the fasting. You put on something with a little bit of white in it. No matter where. Or maybe a little bit of red. Yeah, something. Something, something. You know? You know, so I encourage you to be obedient. Let us pray. Let us pray.
Sister Hilton, the Lord is saying he's going to bless your daughter. The Lord is about to bless your daughter. The Lord is about to open a big door. Big door. People of God, we are still doing our charity. Don't forget to send off your donations for charity. Somebody said, my soul is thirsty. Amen. Don't forget to send your charity donations. Allow the Lord to bless you. Glory to God. Let us pray. Father, we say thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord God, that we are able to do this. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus to provide for your people so they can get the necessary food that they need to use during this fasting. Lord, I ask you to provide for your people so they can eat the right food during the fasting and be obedient. We pray against every spirit of distraction. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to let every conversation that is not of you, let it wait until next week, Wednesday. Hallelujah. We command blessing from above. We command favor, Lord God. I pray that when your people go out, they receive favor with man and favor with God. I pray, O oh God, when they enter their workplace, my God, they'll make a difference. Their presence will make a difference. Use them as they go out during these seven days. My God, I cover each and every one that has to drive. I pray for traveling mercies upon them. I bless their going out and I bless their coming in. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray against every spirit that is coming up against them to distract them in the fasting. I come against every contention that will arise. I come against every backlash in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray with thanksgiving. Even now, O oh God, strengthen us to do this work. Strengthen us to do it, Lord God, and let thy will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. But he said, I'm looking for this, so much for this fasting. We need our blessing in this time. We can't get up and make noise every day. We need to see results. So whatever it takes, we will do. Whatever it takes, we will do to make it happen. Whatever God said for us to do during this fasting, we will do it to see results. Whatever God placed on our heart to do, it will come to pass. We will not be held back. 
And for those of you who the Lord touch your heart to do assignments, do it. Whatever assignment the Lord gave you, do it. It doesn't matter what it seem like. Whatever the Lord tell you to do during this fasting, do it. No distraction. We come against every distraction. People of God, tomorrow I'll be out here at 10 a.m. New York time. And it's going to be from 10 or 10.30 till noon for the next seven days. If the Lord bring me out at night, then so shall it be. We need results. Many of you, you need to prepare your seed during the fasting and watch what God will do for you and your family. You know the problems you have, you have at home. You know what you're facing at work. You know what's going on around you. It's your situation. You don't need anyone to tell you what to do. I'm just giving you a hint. Be obedient. I am already in position. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, stay in your office. Don't move. It's the last fasting for the year. We will go back on fasting on December 31st. Friday, December 31st. Mm -hmm. Because Saturday is January 1st. So we're going to fast into the new year. So Friday, December 31st, we will be on fasting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It will be well. Hallelujah. Many of us don't like vegetables. Many of us, we don't like fruits. But fasting like these, introduce, reintroduce yourself to some fruits and vegetables. In fastings like these, I encourage you to reintroduce yourselves to vegetables and fruits. Hallelujah. My God. Introduce your family to fruits and vegetables during the fasting. Be creative in the fasting so you don't get tired of eating the same thing. It's going to be seven days, so be creative. And don't complain. I encourage your people of God, don't complain about the food that you're going to be eating. People have got to encourage you to be generous in the um, in the what you call it? In the charity. Be generous. We're getting ready for some new stuff for charity. Some clothes. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm, I've been making a room for some new clothes that's coming in for charity. I'm making a room. They're about to receive some more stuff. People are sending in new stuff. We cannot accept anything that is used. If you have it in your home and you try it on, it's not new. Once you try it on because of covid we're not taking anything that was worn or your cologne. It smell as if you sweat or whatever. It doesn't matter. Once you put it on, it's yours. Hallelujah. So we're getting ready again. <laughs> so... 
rice and bread are the food the things that i really favor thank thanking god for this fasting i pray that the lord help you to be creative in your kitchen yes so you can make something that you will enjoy and don't murmur jesus said when you're on fasting your face shouldn't look your countenance shouldn't look sad now your countenance so if your face look dry wash your face that's what jesus said don't look like hypocrites when you're fasting because you are hungry and you are no look lively don't look poorly i encourage you you're gonna get weak on the third day People are going to accuse you. People are going to even lie on you. People are going to even try to physically fight with you. People are going to come up against you. You're going to hear them talking about you at the workplace. Ignore it because it's the plan of the enemy and God allowed these things to manifest so you can know that your fasting is working. So I encourage you. When you see these things begin to happen in the fasting, don't get mad. Don't, don't get mad when things begin to happen in your fasting. Because God already speak. God has already spoken. It's going to be a lot of warfare in the next seven days. Even your very spouse will come up against you if you're not careful over some small stuff because of the kind of fasting. You're putting down the stuff that you have been eating all your life. So now, because you're, you're making the effort to receive your blessings, the devil will come against you. And he will use whoever he can to fight you. Amen. Hallelujah. But I came to let you know it is well. Once again, my time is up. I have to go. See you in the morning. See you in the next 12 hours. Exactly 12 hours from now. So I take my leave. Yeah, I take my leave and I will see you in 12 hours. People of God, I encourage you, if you really want to talk to me, send me a message. Don't call because I won't believe. My phone is going to ignore all calls during this fast. And send me a message and I'll reach out to you. Unless the Lord lead me to call you, that's it. Once again, this was Breakfast with Jesus. Hallelujah. Have yourself a wonderful evening, people of God. Share the message. Allow the Lord to use you. It will be well. God bless you all. And good night. If the message touches you, if what the Lord said here, if you're in agreement with it, if he touches your heart to be a blessing, if you are not a member of any ministry and you would love to be a part, you want to join us, send me a message on WhatsApp at 860-634-8557. Yes. You can join us. So you want to partner with us. It's the same number. If the Lord touches your heart to be a blessing to the ministry, you can use 860-634-8557.
We can use Zelle, Cash App, or PayPal. May the Lord be with you as you continue to walk in the light. God bless you. The number is at the bottom of the screen. If you want to join us, that's the number, 860-634-8557. God bless you all. Remember, 